Okay, now I'm ready to start doing my paving design where I specify for each one of the alignments where the paving features are such as grade breaks, curb transitions, true lengths, vertical curve, intersections. Okay, these will be modeled, these three alignments, as local roads. So we'll have a center line and an L and R1 uh, uh, components for each. So I don't know the alignment names, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, set these current and start defining the minimum requirement for paving feature definition, which are grade breaks. So uh, I'll start by going to the paving tab of the ribbon, and I'll set an alignment current. And I'll just pick a point near that alignment. And now this is the current alignment in terms of working with paving feature uh, definition. So uh, as I stated, grade breaks are the minimum requirement. And each corridor has to start and end with a grade break on each of the uh, components. So I'll go to pave and uh, vertical control points. The plus means to add. So I'm going to go to uh, the center line and define center line grade breaks. So I'll start here, the intersection, and I'll have one there. And I'm going to put one over here, too. And hit return. And you can see I've got a GP at each one of those grade breaks. These are vertical control points that will affect the profile geometry. I'm going to do the same thing for the left and right now. So pave. I'll go ahead and leave my uh, ribbon expanded while I'm doing this. So now I'll define uh, where it breaks on the L1 component. That's going to be um, start there. And um, I'll go ahead and uh, make these uh, control points also. And my L1 component is going to wrap around the uh, the knuckle. So those are my L1 points. Return. And I'm going to say that I'm using 6 inch curb as my beginning curb height. And I'll do the same thing with the R1. And essentially when you're doing this, you're, you're pretty much picking the, uh, the markers that are on the key points. You don't have to pick them all. Um, how you design it is up to you. So now, <clears throat> realistically, I'll need, I'll need to supplement the, uh, the design markers here because I want to make sure that I've got 2% at that point and that point or half a percent or, or whatever we decide to do here with maybe warping the pavement or something. So I need some design markers to reference. So I'm going to go back to vertical control and I'm going to set design markers singular. And um, I'll need to go to the end point here. I'm going to add a few flow labels here too. So, so <clears throat> we're going to make these flat right here from the uh, curb line to the asphalt at center line. So I'll create some uh, links here, or constraints, excuse me. That grade from here to there, um, linear. And um, I'm going to make that uh, zero. Now we could create a warp effect here in the center line and add a marker there or a, a grade break across here if we wanted to. Um, it's just another design option. We've got our minimum requirement, which are grade, uh, grade breaks on the components that we're designing. So now that we've got the paving features defined, we can share the data and have it generate a corridor model and generate profile data. So we'll say share paving current. And you can see uh, we've got our corridor model in there. It's popped right in there as we uh, shared the data. I'm going to go and view this from uh, isometric. And that's the top surface. Real easy. Now we've got uh, profile data now that we can view along with that. So let's go ahead and check that out. <clears throat> 